go. All right. This is just a quick tutorial on how to use your Sonos application as well as the Control 4 application, its features and its limitations, something that might help you along in playing music in your house. The first we'll start with is the Sonos app application. The Sonos device is just that. It is a device. It's a player. Um, it is, think of it like a, a DVD player. However, instead of playing physical discs, it will actually play internet music services. Uh, it will play services such as Pandora, Rhapsody, Mog, iHeartRadio, and many, many, many others. Uh, it will also play music from a networked hard drive. You may or may not have this set up in your specific system. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by showing you the Sonos application. So the first thing we'll do is we'll find the Sonos application on your phone or your iPad. Uh, it's also supported on Android devices. It does not come preloaded, so if you don't already have it, you'll need to download that from the app, uh, app store that you get your applications from. We'll start by launching the application, and you'll see, let's see, we'll go to the zones menu. So this is your rooms. These are, in our current system, these show the locations that we have set up uh, with Sonos devices. Uh, we have one named the lobby, which is the room we're in now, our office, and in our theater room. These can be grouped together or played individually. Uh, you'll find that uh, they all operate the same, and uh, if I show you one, you'll figure out how to work the, the remaining ones. So we're in the lobby. So what we're going to do is we're going to play some music in the lobby. We'll start by selecting the room and that will show us what is currently going on in that room. It says now playing. It'll show uh, some cover art, the track name, the artist name, uh, the album name. It'll give you your thumbs down and your thumbs up icon and that's basically what's going on. Right now in this room we're currently muted. We can tell because the mute is highlighted. If I unmute that you'll hear some music playing in the background. Now your Sono system may or may not have a volume slider. Uh, that, could, that is because some Sonoses can be set up uh, so that they have a fixed volume output. Uh, this uh, would be the instance if you have your Sonos plugged into a home theater receiver uh, or into a multi-room distributed amplifier. Uh, in that case, your amplifier would control the volume and not your Sonos itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to select some music on your Sonos application. The first button you have up here is Music. So for the lobby, we'll choose Music. And that will take us to all of our music sources. These are something that you set up um, during the initial installation of your Sonos device. However, more can be added or subtracted at any time that you want. So these are just some of the sources that we have currently on uh, our system. Um, we can play music from the music library, which would be a hard drive. Uh, I can play music directly from this phone, docked iPods, radio, iHeartRadio, Mog, Pandora Radio, Rhapsody, Sirius XM, and then playlists in some various other settings. What we're going to do is we're going to show you how to select Pandora. You push the button, and this will take you to your Pandora radio interface. This shows you all of the stations that we currently have in our Pandora. And this will be associated with your specific Pandora username and password. You can edit stations um, or create new stations. We can also select a station. So right now we'll, we'll, we'll choose uh, Chris Cornell Radio. By touching that, it brings up the option to play now or add to Sonos Favorites. We want to play now. So if you can hear in the background, you'll notice that that changed from what we were currently listening to to now we're listening to Chris Cornell Radio. It's going to play artists uh, Chris Cornell as well as anybody that sounds like Chris Cornell, uh, bands that were popular in the same uh, time period, uh, bands that are in the same genre, or even uh, current artists that uh, have same similar musical characteristics. We're listening to Pearl Jam. So if I like this song, I can give it a thumbs up. If I don't like the song, I can give it a thumbs down. It's very important, the more you use this, these features, the better the station is going to get for you. If I give it a thumbs up, it's going to play more songs with similar characteristics to what we are playing. If I give it a song, if a thumbs down, it's going to never play that song again on this particular station, and it tells you so by giving you the message, and it will also learn that I don't like songs with that particular musical characteristics on that station. Now, this is important to know that you can have uh, two different stations that do not interact with one another. So say if I had 
two Bruce Springsteen stations, and one of his stations, every time an up-tempo song came on, I gave it a thumbs up. It's going to make that station more upbeat. If every time uh, I gave it a thumbs down, it's going to make that station more mellow. It will not interact with any of the other stations that you have. So that basically explains how you select Pandora and how you thumbs up and thumbs down. Now let's go through how do you create a new station on Pandora. Let's go back. You can use the back arrow. Back to our stations list. And then there's a button here that says <clears throat> new station. Gives me the option for artist, genre, track, or composer. We use Bruce Springsteen as an option. So I'm going to type in Bruce Springsteen. And hit search. Now notice I actually spelled it wrong, and it did spell correct it and gave me the options. We'll choose Bruce Springsteen, and I can PlayStation Now or PlayStation Later. We'll PlayStation Now. So now in the lobby, it has just switched us from Chris Cornell Radio to Bruce Springsteen Radio. The first artist just so happens to be Bruce Springsteen. It may or not be in your instance. So now this station is going to play songs from Bruce Springsteen, people that sound like Bruce Springsteen, bands that were popular along the same time, and etc., etc., um, and now he will also show up in our stations list. If we go back, they're all alphabetized. So if we go to the P's, or the B's rather, Bruce, Bruce Springsteen Radio, it now shows up in our stations list. You can edit the stations. Uh, so if I wanted to change that name from Bruce Springsteen, I could call it Bruce Springsteen Up Tempo or Bruce Springsteen Down Tempo, depending on my own personal preferences. That's basically how... Pandora operates on the Sonos application. Let's show you how you can use Rhapsody. Let's see, we'll go back. Um, now playing music. Back to our musical sources. So now we'll choose Rhapsody. Now, one thing I didn't mention before with Pandora Radio, you do not, I repeat, do not have the ability to choose a specific song for playback. playback. With Rhapsody, that's one of the highlights of this application and this music service. With Rhapsody, you can choose a very specific song, album, uh, artist, etc., and listen to it at that exact point in time. 90% of all the music that's in existence is on Rhapsody. You will find certain artists and certain albums that are not on there just due to <coughs> licensing, but there is a tremendous amount of music on Rhapsody. Once we choose Rhapsody from our music services... We have the ability to search, uh, go through my artists, my albums, my genres, my tracks, my playlists. Those are things that you're going to create by after you search. You can add those songs to each of those categories. So let's start by searching. I can search by artist, albums, composers, or tracks. Let's choose artists. So I want to search for an artist named Beastie Boys. Oops. As soon as I start typing, it pulls up some suggestions. Beastie Boys is right there. I have their main releases, their top albums, their top tracks, sampler, other releases, and an artist channel. These are where you would get those options. I could go to the artist channel, and then I could save that to my channels for future playback. Let's look at their top tracks. These would be things that are the most popular that they've ever done. We'll choose Brass Monkey, just because it's at the top of the list. As soon as I... Choose it, it gives me the options, play now, replace queue, add to queue, or add to Sonos favorites. Each of those buttons do just that. Uh, the queue is, th is kind of like a playlist, and that allows you, once you create, once you throw a bunch of songs into that queue, you can name that queue and save it as your own specific playlist for summertime or party or anything that you, the mood might uh, call for. We'll play now. And now in the background you'll hear, it is playing that exact track that I asked for. Now let's do that again and we'll add it to a queue. We'll pick a couple of songs and we'll add it and we'll create a playlist. We'll go back. Let's see. We'll choose Fight for Your Right. Add to queue. We'll choose, let's see, Sabotage. 
add to queue and we'll choose so what you want add to queue now if we go back to our main music menu just by using the back button uh, let's see is that under so let's play this oh no you want go to music in the bottom left oh no the music again now playing and then and then oh nope now bottom left so these are the songs that are showing up in our queue basically in our playlist so now I can edit clear or save and if I save that it'll I can save it under whatever name I want and use that for future playback go back to our zones shows us what's going on we'll choose lobby and pause it and that's basically how you shut that down now one thing to keep in mind is if you have a system that has Sonos uh, being controlled by Control 4 Control 4 is just a fancy remote control uh, and one of the limitations of the Control 4 interface is it does not allow you to edit stations from Pandora or to do a search and actually choose the songs uh, in the Rhapsody application. What it does allow you to do is it does allow you to interface uh, with Sonos, turn it on, adjust the volume, and play something that you've already pre-selected. So if you have a favorited station uh, that you've created from Pandora, uh, you can recall those stations from the Control 4 interface, or if you have channels or playlists from Rhapsody, you can recall those from Control 4. It's really its only limitation is being able to search or direct input. And that's a, uh, something that's enabled through software that will come in a future software update. It's just not currently available uh, as of today. So let's show you how to turn this system on using your Control 4 interface. This is the Control 4 5 inch Infinity Edge touchscreen display. As you can see, it's currently in a sleep mode. We can wake it up simply by touching anywhere on the screen. It tells us the room that we're controlling and gives us some options of things that we can do. We're in the lobby. We want to choose Sonos Display. Now your rooms may be named different. We have uh, in our showroom here at our store, we have the episode room, the monitor room, the theater room, the lobby, and the Sonos Display. We chose to create its own room and call it the Sonos Display just so we can show people uh, very quickly how to control it. We'll choose Sonos Display. It will change rooms and now you can tell that we are currently controlling the Sonos Display Room. If this did not display the room that you wish to control at the top, you'll be controlling another room. So you always want to make sure if you're in your living room and you want to control something in your living room, that better say living room, otherwise you're going to be interrupting somebody else's TV time. So we want to listen. So we're going to choose listen and we want to choose Sonos because that's what we want to listen to in this room. So here, you're, here, here you will see some of the options uh, from the Sonos interface. We have music library. You may or may not have this. Uh, you'll probably have the button, but if you don't have a network attached hard drive with stored music on it, you won't be able to access any of the information. iPod docs, music services, favorites, saved playlists, music queue, and radio stations. We want to go to music services because Pandora and Rhapsody are both music services and that's what our uh, tutorial centers on today. We'll choose music services. Now this will display the music services that your particular Sonos system has. We want to listen to Pandora. So now we have our stations. This will give all of the stations that we have associated with our Pandora account. Yours will obviously be different. Let's choose Will Smith Radio. Now on this particular one, you actually have to touch the triangle in order to make it play. By touching it, you'll hear in the background, the Sonos will come on, and this displays down here our current information, our track back, track forward, pause, mute button, volume down, volume up, and room power off. Let's go ahead and turn the volume down. So now we've just got our volume lowered so you can hear me talk a little bit better. Now this is going to be very hard to see. If you'd actually like to see it, you can touch this and it will display it a little bit larger so you can see what the artist, uh, who the artist is, the track name, as well as the cover art that's being displayed. 
If you'd like to uh, raise the volume, you can. If you'd like to pause it, you can. But certain features will not work uh, with uh, Pandora. Uh, because Pandora is a streaming service, we can't track backwards. It's streaming live, so there's no way to rewind it. <clears throat> you can use the track forward to skip to the next song. We'll, we'll hit the play button. We'll let it start playing again. And if we track forward, it will change to the next track that it was going to play, uh, regardless of whether you hit a button or not. That was just kind of what was queued up next to happen. So, we'll show you how to go back to Music Services. We'll choose Rhapsody. Now with Rhapsody, you'll notice that we don't have any options to search. Again, this will come in a future software update. But what we do have is my artists, my albums, my genres, uh, my channels. And if you scroll down, we'll actually have our tracks and all the way down at the bottom is playlists. This is where your playlists will show up. We only have one playlist created here, just as a uh, demo. We called it Summer. So let's hit Summer. And it gives us the option of every song that's in that playlist. We can play it directly, or we can play all. We'll hit Play All. Do we want to play it now and interrupt the song that's currently playing? Or do we want to play next or add to the end of the queue? I'm in the mood to play it now, so we'll hit play now. Oh, sorry. Again, we have to hit that triangle. And now you're here. It's playing some music that we want to listen to in the summertime, so we threw it into our summer playlist. And it's going to play everything in there. If you want to edit this playlist, you'll need to use either the Rhapsody website, the Rhapsody application on your iPad, iPhone, or Android device. That's really the only way that you can do it. Same thing goes with Pandora. If you want to edit any of the Pandora stuff on here, uh, it, you'll have to use the Pandora application uh, on one of your mobile devices, like an iPhone or an iPad, or you'll have to go to the Pandora website. Now, one of the nice things is, is that all of that stuff happens globally. So if you're at work listening to Pandora on your computer and you create a new station, when you get home and turn on your Sonos or on your Control 4, that new station is going to show up in your playlist here. You don't have to do anything, it just happens automatically. And that'll also show up, if you did that at work, it'll show up on your iPhone, under the Pandora application, and so forth. Now, Pandora and Rhapsody also both have their own individual applications. So I turned my iPhone on, and we just went, it went back to the last application that was being used, which is the Sonos application. We'll hit the Home button, go back to all of our apps. I have my music apps in one folder. We'll pull up Pandora. Pandora is a free service, so you will get ads unless you're paying for the premium account. We'll skip to Pandora. See, that's one of the pop-up ads. Now, on my phone, here's a song that I have. If I hit play, you'll notice that Pandora actually plays directly right from my phone. And that is something I can do. I can put my headphones in and, and listen to Pandora while I'm using my phone. Or I can actually... Uh, use it as a quick way to create, edit, and name stations. So also give thumbs ups and, and thumbs down to stuff that's playing. We'll go back. And here's my Pandora station list. This just shows you some of the stuff that I have in my list. I have the option, my stations, my feed, um, profile, and settings. If I go to uh, add, I can add a station, just like I showed you before on the Sonos app. It works the exact same way, even though I'm doing it from a completely different app. Now, if I do something here, uh, now this account actually is not associated with the account up there, so I can't show you how that populates immediately, uh, but it does. If I was to type in uh, Nine Inch Nails as, an album, as a uh, band name and create a new station, as soon as, without doing any additional setup, as soon as I went over there to my account on the Control 4 screen and went to my Pandora stations, the Nine Inch Nail station would show up. So that, in a nutshell, is basically how you can interact with Pandora and Rhapsody and Control 4 in your house. <laughs>